I'm not on this committee. You're not on this I'm committee. Just, Chris, I, that's right. Yes. I thought it was you. Who's on this committee? You, Algie. You, you, me, and Jill. I apologize, Jill. That's okay. okay. I'm just, just nope. over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. Do we? We don't have to move anything. It's just we, approval, right? Approve. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't here on May. We well, usually so just go right. right. Yeah. Is any any questions or concerns about the minutes from? No. No, I, I think they're fine. So one question usually will Valen told someone okay, right. to be a chairperson. Is there anyone interested in being a chairperson for HR this? Could year? I, I don't know how long you've been on HR, Chris. Long ten time. years you, minimum. Ten really. <laughs> okay. Well, we were on the first yes, so, we on. so eleven. Well, I think I skipped a year. Did you skip a year? Okay. I, so I'm I'm assuming though. Your chair of finance again? That was going to be have, my other question. Oh, they haven't yet. We Colin haven't. told you? No, I haven't been volunteering yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you didn't have everybody in finance. You um, did? No. Uh, so we, we, we moved it. Right. So. Yeah. And how long have you been on? I've been on HR I for six or seven years. Six or seven. Okay. Six did or seven. Does either one of you want to beg us not to? Have you been the chair of the? I'm I'm willing to do it again. I'm willing. And if you're willing to do fine. <laughs> so, okay. Or okay. Be, good. Yes. yes. In that oh. case, I move. Okay. That we're we'll be um, elected to a chair of this committee. Second. Um, okay. All in favor? Uh, all right. Okay. So all right. Computers are done. There. Okay, and so now um, the next item of business is a discussion. Discussion of health insurance for Medicare uh, eligible retirees, and we have Christina Braga from PNB here, and we have Bob Van Curen from ICSD here, and. Um, did you see the documents that I forwarded from Christina with uh, a comparison chart and and answers to questions that we had posed? I, I found those extremely helpful. As but did I. Did not answer everything, of course, which I'm hoping more of will get answered in our, during our big meeting uh -huh. with public and uh the other folks here so but yeah this is this was great thank you Good. and i apologize i have a second version that came today as i was reading through i realized when i pdf'd it it cut off a few sentences so it's version two of that uh, board so question probably answer. answers those questions yeah, so it could maybe it was just cut off <laughs> um, so that is possible um, but like Moira said, my name is christina braga it's nice to see some of you again and it's nice to meet some of you for the first time you used to have to deal with me like every other month or so I come down here, but with COVID it's been a while, so I wanted to pop down and see everybody and make sure, most importantly, that I can answer all of your questions. I, and with Bob as well, we've been spending a lot, a lot of time on the very intricate details about the plans, worked with your retirees for months and months and months. So um, my goal is to leave here today with you understanding the plan, kind of understanding the questions, and if there's any takeaways for whatever reason I don't know, I'm happy to get the answer and get back to everyone. Okay, does that sound like a plan? Yes. All right, um, so do we wanna start with, um, so everyone got this document, right? So this is a comparison between the Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield document and the Aetna MAPD, which is the Medicare plan. Okay? Um, Moira pointed out, so I want to clarify, you're going to notice on the Excel side, it'll say 100%. But under the Aetna side, it'll say $0 copay. They mean the same thing. But the reason the language is different is because on the Excel side, you have a deductible and coinsurance after. So it's not a copay. You have uh, two different mechanisms working within the plan. So if it's 100% covered, that's the coinsurance. On the Aetna plan, since there's no deductible, they relay that as a $0 copay. So that's what your members would see, is that $0 copay. Okay. On the Aetna plan, you're going to see certain uh, enhancements. You'll see there's an eyewear allowance. There's hearing aid allowance. There are some enhancements on things like chiropractic, 
that don't exist on your Excellus plan. Also, there were um, certain services uh, like Pap Smear um, is typically one every three years. You have an enhancement to do every uh, year uh, based on feedback from retirees. So the Atma plan has enhancements based on feedback that we received over the years and trying to address uh, member issues. Uh, if you go down to the bottom, uh, we can just get right down to the last page, I would say. Uh, all the benefits are really listed there. So here, this is where um, we talk about the prior authorization, which is where a lot of our questions have come in. So prior authorization on your Excellus plan does not apply. However, medical necessity reviews do apply. And I think sometimes that piece is forgotten. So medical necessity is what every carrier has. It's a policy that determines what services get paid for. And every carrier has that because otherwise it would be a free for all of getting services done, right? So with Excellus, that happens retrospectively. So if I go to PT a few times and then maybe my third or fourth visit, the insurance might bill me because they realize it's not medically necessary. I would be responsible for that bill because of the medical policy. On the Aetna side, prior authorization applies to the more costly services. So not to all services, but the more costly services. And the reason they do that is because even though they have the same medical policy, which is almost identical to Excellus's, the prior authorization process lets a retiree know in advance if there could be any issues with the bill. So that way there's no surprise bill after a service. So they need um, a piece of equipment. If it's not approved, they'll know before they get it. They can work out the details. Most of the time, the doctor just needs to submit the proper paperwork, and we don't have an issue. So that is really the difference there and where a lot of our questions are. Um, one thing I did note in here, um, because we have been hearing about PT and OT a lot, there are no prior authorizations on PT. So there's just the medical necessity policy, just like what you have with Excellus. So someone could go, but then after so many visits, they check up against their med policy. So I just wanted to clarify that piece. So then under the prescription drug coverage, based on your bargaining contracts, you have different prescription co-pays. So we have different plans that have to be offered. What we have put uh, on the left-hand side, those are the premium equivalents for those Excellus plans. So basically, based on the cost, that's what we have to budget. And on the right-hand side, those are the Aetna premiums that the district would pay. So you can see the drastic difference. Um, another drastic difference is that everyone under the Aetna plan is a single. So if it's myself and my spouse, we're both singles, or belly buttons, we like to call them. Under the Excellus plan, if I'm a husband and wife, family, you're going to notice is more than two times. There's a family factor because your Excellus plan has families built in. So retirees that are over 65 would be paying on a higher factor, whatever percentage they have. So 10% of a higher number as opposed to 10% of two singles. Does that make sense? I want to clarify for me one more time for the folks yep. listening at home. Say it on top of me. Sure. It's nope. a bit of a sell vibe. Yep. So on the Excellus side, yeah. If you are a family, that could be just a husband and a wife. Right. But it's not the single rate times two, it's usually times 2.7. Wow. So because you're accounting for all the families that have multiple children, yeah. it's what we call a family factor. Okay. So that's what's built into the Excellus family. Excellus right? So yes. it's, a, it's a multiple rather than a group. So you, I got you. Yep, so I'm one family contract, but I could have five people in my family. The rate is based off of a family factor, which is times 2.7. That's okay. difference. That's a big one for us to note. Yeah, so if I'm a retiree and it's me and my husband, I am paying off of two single rates. So not only is the rate much lower, but then it takes out the family factor on top of that. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. Okay. So you can see here if we're just talking about premium equivalents. You can see without even factoring in the additional family factor, um, the budget, if all of the post-65 retirees were in the Excellus plan, would be about $8.9 million. And the Aetna plan, uh, based on paid premiums, about $3.7 So that's just budgeted rate 
against the fully insured premium. So the next question that I always get, and we've gotten so many times, was, well, it's too good to be true. How can this be possible that this plan is that much better for the district? And the reason is because you are under 1,000 enrolled in the medical, you are considered community rated, which means they cannot use your experience against you. And historically in the post 65 population, the Ithaca retirees have had very, very high claims experience. So the fact that this is a community rated product means that they don't look at that. They don't take that into account. They give you the rate based on tens and hundreds of thousands of retirees in their community pool. So that's really the biggest advantage that we have being in this product. In addition, because this product has an actual Part D as in dog for the prescription, Aetna also gets back government subsidies. So they're able to tap into a federal reinsurance, which is like almost like a stop loss from the government. They're able to tap into additional manufacturer money, and that also helps them keep the premiums down so they can offer it to us at a reasonable rate. Does that all make sense? As much as it's going to, I, I know. Think. It's, a, it's a lot, so please ask questions. I, I just feel like I've been just so immersed in this for so long, and I just feel like I'm really starting to get a handle on it after all this time and be able to hold on to it. Like I, I would learn things, I'd ask questions, and then I would lose my understanding. So after a really long time, I feel like I'm just beginning to really be able to have it solidly. Christina, what, um, when you look at these two plans, just are there, are there areas where you think Excellus does or no, where Aetna does not match Excellus. The only area they look, I, I'm just saying because my sort of simple look at this, they they seem equivalent, mm -hmm. which is I suppose what we're looking for equivalent or or better or better. better. Yeah. Right. And yep. And so better this type of comparison was what was presented to to the committees and everybody before. I vaguely just to, remember this. Yeah, yeah. Just to try to do a deep dive to get all the questions answered. But the only area really um, that we found um, benefit-wise is orthotics. Excellus, because Medicare doesn't cover orthotics, Excellus had an orthotic benefit. So what happens is today when uh, someone has orthotics, that goes through the appeal process that we've been talking about. So the retiree reaches out to us, we get their documentation, and we get them reimbursed through the district. Effective January 1st, though, Aetna will have a rider for those orthotics. So those folks won't even need to go through that process. And at that point, I would say, I'm not aware of a benefit that wouldn't be equivalent or better to the Excellus plan. And I would say, so, um, you know, all along from the beginning, we have said when, um, when we went to the Hartford and then to Aetna, that if there are unforeseen gaps, where something would have been covered by Exilus and is not being covered by Aetna, the district will reimburse. Uh, I think the question is that um, has that process of people being able to find out whether something that's been denied would have been covered out of at, by Exilus is the process of discovering the, the facts and then getting the actual reimbursement, is that working? So from our perspective, if they reach out to our office, really if they get us the information, we have to do a lot of the legwork from there. So we then do a test claim with Excellus. We run their exact CPT and diagnosis code to say, okay, uh, John Smith is on this plan. Would this have been covered based on these circumstances? And aside from the orthotics, really the answer has been typically no or it's experimental. So in that case, what we do is we go back to the retiree with a policy and say, here's the policy that details it with Excellus. So unfortunately, based on what you gave us, this would not be covered under the Excellus, which means unfortunately you won't be reimbursed through the Aetna plan either. Um, 
we did have, after the letter went out, we had many people call us um, about old situations we had worked on, thinking maybe something had changed. So we looked at it with a fresh set of eyes, just in case. And in every one of the cases, still the answer, unfortunately, was they were not eligible for reimbursement. And, and the, go ahead. And that's just a, a point of uh, clarification, too. The rate of denials for the Medicare is substantially less than the rate of denials for Excel's Blue Cross. Yeah. It made for, and, uh, it's significantly less. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. You so, said Medicare. So so I'm I'm new to this, but soon I'll be on one of these plans too. Um, so what I am seeing with the cost comparisons are that there's there's no place that Excellus pays more than Aetna except for orthotic, but there are many places where people would have to pay out of pocket for services that are covered by Aetna. And when you talked about um, mammography, pap smear, prostate cancer, some of, um, some of these, is, there's a, is there a difference in the frequency with which it's covered by Blue Cross and Aetna that it's covered more, frequent, more frequent, frequently by Aetna? Actually, um, typically it would be less frequently, so we had to add in riders to increase the frequency because Excellus changes their recommendations based on the data at the time. So again, the pap smear is a perfect example. Right now it's once every three years if nothing is detected. Certain retirees wanted to go every year, that's just what they felt comfortable with. Under Excellus that would not be covered unless there's a reason. But under the Aetna plan, we had a rider added. So that's actually an enhancement over the Excellus plan, for instance. And the, and the, uh, the rate of uh, denials, which was on this spreadsheet that Moira sent around a while ago, I found the most compelling of all the documents that basically Excellus is denying three times the number of claims per person as Aetna. Yes, and I honestly was in disbelief. I asked four different times and four different people because I just, like, this can't be wrong. Somebody needs to make sure you're checking this. And he's like, no, we're telling you this is the rate of denial. And I know people like to think Excellus is perfect. Well, not the people that are having problems with Excellus, but if you don't have Excellus, you, know, you might think it's perfect. But we have just as many calls with retirees on Excellus plans today. They can't get their diabetic medication. They can't get whatever they need. It's, it's not a perfect solution uh, like some people may think. Oh, something that came up the other day. Um, is it possible, this is what, that some of the people who ha are having problems on Aetna that the pro like for instance being told that they can't be accepted as a patient um, by a particular doctor is it Medicare that's the problem and that they're having problems because not because they're on Aetna but because they're now on Medicare where previously they didn't have that issue. It's possible, but also we're running into a lot of practices that just aren't accepting new patients. New, right. So we're, we're getting calls. The Aetna plan, you know, is keeping me from going to ABC, and we call the provider, and they're like, we're not taking anybody. Yeah. So there's just. And I do know some doctors take are taking new Medicare patients, mm -hmm. uh, and that and that when people have been told that they have misunderstood and thought it was because of Aetna, right. and it. If it isn't Aetna. Right. Right. So no matter what arrangement you were on, whether it was back with Excellus or not, folks would still, in that scenario, run into an issue where they wouldn't be able to see that provider. So, crazy question. Um, with the number of um, retirees that had issues, how many are have still have outstanding issues that have not been addressed or rectified that we know of? I. I I guess it depends on what you mean by rectified. <laughs> because in our mind, if we 
provide the medical policy and you know clear instructions, you know, this would or wouldn't be reimbursed. In our mind, unfortunately, it's closed. But in the retiree's mind, they yeah, might so, look at it yeah. as so and, and what they're also looking at is either coverage or reimbursement, correct? So they're from what I understand and looking at this, it's not a large out large amount of outstanding um, lack of coverage or reimbursement, correct? Correct. So uh, rough numbers. Oh, let's see. Active issues right now that we're finishing up, probably 12, including the orthotics claims. We have a lot of orthotics claims right now, and those are going to get reimbursed. Just a matter of getting the right paper trail. So yeah, I would say probably a dozen. So we're now insuring approximately how many folks? Uh, 840 uh, belly buttons on the Aetna side of things. So that includes spouses. Yes, yeah, sorry, belly buttons is just our lingo. <laughs> the two big um, complaints about Aetna that I recall was one was someone being refused physical therapy or cut off from physical therapy. And, and the frequency of physical therapy, you could only get X amount. Correct. If I find yeah. Remembering that correctly. Frequency of physical. So, but it was all around the same person, and then there there was someone who wanted to go to a particular Mayo pain clinic. Mm -hmm. But there was also another reason why they, that Edna, why they couldn't get into that, yes. as I recall. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So yeah, the pain clinic situation. Um, they uh, were at a spot during COVID where they weren't taking the Aetna plan, the Medicare folks. When we called, though, you have to you had to um, be referred by their primary care, and they weren't accepting new patients. So in that case, the member had to go someplace else. It wasn't an option. So um, that was the situation. And then as far as the frequency on PT. Um, I think the situation you're talking about, what we discovered is that they had a new biller in the PT office, and you have to request the visits as you go with a plan of care. If you don't submit a plan of care, they're not going to give you more visits. So once we, it was a long haul, but once we figured out that was the issue and educated the brand new biller, that hasn't been an issue since that I'm aware of as far as getting visits, eat like visits uh, at a time. Okay. I'm happy to hear that. Can I just ask you a question just about the number of people on Aetna? Because I'm looking at the comparison chart, and it's divided into three different categories, and it's 265, 482, and 2. And that, my doing the math, is 749 belly buttons. OK. It could, hmm, I could be thinking of your latest numbers. This is probably oh, as of the marketing time. Oh, OK. All right. But what, the yeah. headcount should be the same for both. So right. if we added to both, it would go up. Right, exactly. Okay. So in fact, with so more people, right. it would be even more uh, costly. Right. Yeah. The exactly. numbers would both go up. Mm -hmm. Okay. One of the other things the committee might present is there's a federal report uh, oh, yes. that really, at least on the surface, maybe in depth a little bit, seem to attack Medicare Advantage plans as being uh, rife with waste, fraud, and abuse. Now, if you read down in further, there's some details that, you know, at first blush, it's not as bad as, as what you might think. And secondly, I don't think it really targeted that now or found culpability with that now to any great extent. Um, but you're going to hear about that report, I'm pretty sure, at the, at the full board meeting. And Christina, didn't you make the the uh, the, us the information that some of the um, issues with Medicare Advantage are with individual plans rather than our customized group plan? That's correct. A lot of the articles that we were seeing from like the Watchdog Group were complaints about Medicare Advantage. They were individual. So on the individual side. There is a donut hole, which means you have a gap in your prescription coverage. Um, there are sometimes referrals needed. There are a lot of little intricate things that folks can't control on the individual market, but they need a Medicare product. This is a custom group program. So um, one of the members had asked if there was a star rating on this plan, and there's not even a star rating because it's custom. Nothing else exists like 
your plan. Um, their star ratings on the individual plans, because those are off the shelf, uh, and that's what they sell to people. That's the one where Joe Namath wants you to call the toll. That's number. right. Yeah. And for zero dollars. Well, I, I, I know. And those are those yes. are so <laughs> annoying because they make people believe yes, that you do. can have the world for nothing. Yes. And it's baloney. Yeah. And we actually have a Medicare expert in house that deals just with individuals who said, Hey, I saw Joe Namus, and uh, can you give me that plan? And she goes, Wait a minute. I need to see what you really need. Because if you go with Joe Namus, you're going to have a big bill if you have a prescription, right? So she'll actually sit down with someone and analyze what they need. Um, because, yes, it's so confusing, and there's so much information being thrown at retirees. As soon as you turn 65, your mailbox is full. So um, I know part of you know, the issues of having has been, you know, a little bit of misinformation or something they heard from a friend that this is what happens with Medicare. And so when they come to the source, usually we can answer it and take care of things. But just getting them to come to us to get the question answered is important. Along those lines, if, if someone has an issue now or very recently and they do what I would do, which is probably call Amanda or Marta because that's who I know to call. Yes. And I would say I'm having this problem. What would happen next? Would, would they refer me to your office? Probably, yes. As a matter of routine. There isn't there isn't an in-house ombudsman for health insurance or anything like that. And, and so what they would tell me would be uh, so we have someone who handles that. Here's their number. Call them with your concerns. Mm -hmm. And we have three school district experts in house um, because we handle over 140 school districts in New York State and hundreds of these types of Medicare plans. Mm -hmm. So um, they're very well versed in Medicare and Ithaca and schools. Okay. So they, one of them would be able to assist you with whatever question you had. I, I know that information is out there. And I know that I received it. And, and now I'm wondering to what extent, when you sent out your, your latest letter saying, if you've been having problems, let us know. We want to work with you. We want to know how, what the issues are. How many responses did you get to that? Um, probably like a dozen and a half. Really? That, that few? Yeah, and they were all old issues. I don't even think we had one. Maybe we had one new one that we hadn't known about previously. And it was something she's like, yeah, I wasn't going to do anything, but I guess since I got this letter, so she wasn't really concerned about it, but thought, I'll give it a try. Okay, so out of 800 and some people, 700 and some people that you sent this letter to, you got approximately 12. Well, it's probably 20. Okay, let's say 20, and a half even. A, a, approximately 20 unhappy people. Mm -hmm. Well, just people that said, oh, I want to see if my claim will be covered now. Because okay. for whatever reason, their claim was not covered, and they just wanted to see if something changed. And then that one new person wanted to see if there was anything they could do. Okay. And your sense was that most of those were orthotic? Yes, yeah, so both of them were orthotic related, and they know uh, from past years that they were going to get reimbursed. So okay. it's just a matter of getting all the paperwork uh, in order so that they can get their reimbursement. And there's currently, to your knowledge, one unhappy person whose issues have not been resolved to their satisfaction. Is well, that... uh, one person that was new that responded to the letter. Okay. Um, so not necessarily is that they were unhappy, but they just brought their issue up for the first time, whereas all the others that called based on the letter and were then, repeats okay. that we had dealt with at one point or another over the years. And they were all eventually satisfied, or only some of them were eventually satisfied? Um, the orthotic ones would be reimbursed, the rest would not. Okay, so there are, of those people, see here's, I'm, I'm trying to get a sense of, I have all this information, and I'm trying to funnel it down to how many unhappy people are there out there? And well, is, they may be unhappy. And is there is unhappiness? Their unhappiness is because they believe That's what that it should have been covered, it would have been covered. Or it would have been covered under... Right, and LCS. Christina is saying they investigate and they run... I, I like that because it helped clarify me that you run a test claim 
with right. Blue Cross Blue Shield, and that contrary to people's beliefs, it would not have been covered on the other plan. Yes. And we started doing that and getting a policy because I think when we told folks no, unfortunately, they thought, well, you're just on the district side. You don't want me to get my money. And so we said, nope, we need a paper trail because this isn't, Good. you know, Christina Braga deciding, yeah, I don't think I want to pay your claim. There, we have a very clear paper trail with a policy and we send that along so there's no question as to so is that the chart that we're missing christine is that the chart that we're missing that over the years there have been 80 disputed claims 40 of them were decided um oh, I see. you see what i'm saying yes, is to, to yeah. really make it clear 40 of them it was decided that indeed a mistake had been made and they were reimbursed 20 of them it was decided the person hadn't gone through the proper procedure of, of getting pre-approval or whatever and that was explained to the that's that's what would help me to understand this groundswell of what feels like a groundswell mm -hmm. of unhappiness despite what seems to be some very clear data in favor of staying with Aetna mm -hmm. or and, people and like myself to piggyback on that you know from a financial standpoint there's no financial benefit to the item on the school district's point because if you tabulate the total cost that would have been paid out by this, it's not a lot of money. Right. You know what I mean? Right. right. Orthotics so, claims you probably paid out, you know, a hundred bucks for each person, you know, on orthotics. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay. But uh, that data won't capture people that just give up. Right. And that's right. what the committee has said. Like right. there's and I you know I don't I don't really know how to reach well, I don't have to quantify those people. It's yeah, sure. right. quantify yeah. There's going to be some percentage. I, uh, I, so we were sitting, and I was like, how, how did we actually get here? Like, how did we lose the groundswell of whether it's, you know, eight or nine active people on the committee or the 180 or 220 people on the email chain that signed up? Mm -hmm. You know, to get um, but I, yeah. I think Jill has a great point, that visual of this is the number of people, this is what was, you know, not rectified or addressed, but this was the process, and so you break it down, so it almost shows out of the number of issues, and everybody, everybody has an issue with... I think on the denials, yeah. Denials or, you know, whatever the classifications are, mm -hmm. and then it shows the true outcome and the percentage, and also, Oh, it would have been denied under Blue Cross Blue Shield anyway. So it clarifies all of those misconceptions. I think that visual needs there's to the be shown. equivalency issue, and the, there's the happiness unhappiness with that issue. They're think, somewhat different. I think the committee has even said, and, and I don't want to speak for them, but essentially they they have said this is equivalent, right? They're not really equivalent oh, about that. Okay. The equivalence, okay. how they're, they're sort of shifting the language, is not that this will be covered and that wouldn't, but that the process they have to go through, the hoops they have to jump through, the pre-authorization. Um, that that is, isn't equivalent, or that not isn't equivalent satisfactory, okay. And, cor and correct me if you're the expert, I'm like way down here from your knowledge, but it's different psychologically when you go to the doctor and Excel's Blue Cross, there's no gatekeeping. And you get the procedure done, and you get a bill a month later that is hard to understand. You're just happy that Blue Cross Blue Shield paid 90% of it. You're like, okay, I gotta pay, you know, 100. They paid 800, I gotta pay 150. It's another thing to be in the doctor's office, and because of the two bureaucracies they're dealing with, you're sitting there, and the secretary is saying, we don't have the authorization yet. Like, oh, oh that, that, right? that is. Now, now <clears throat> it's like he just pissed me off at the very minimum. That's the psychological difference. I think that's how we got here because there are too many cases of people, for whatever reason, either the doctor's office forgot or didn't send the appropriate paperwork, and Aetna is much more vigilant on pre authorization. So they're like, and that feels like a denial. We're not okay in this to get the proper paperwork. Yeah. Well, if I'm a day away from the surgery at the doctor's office and it hasn't been approved, now my anxiety goes skyrocketing. Um, but also, you know, it's not clear to me, you know, how many cases of that um, there yeah. have been. 
Right. And then also, is there a way to, you know, and Bob has said this in meetings, to try to address the service issues um, that um, seem to be uh, plaguing some people um, and causing anxiety. Also, it's very clear to me um, from talking to people and getting emails and the survey that a lot of people, they hear about somebody else's problem and they, sometimes they even misunderstand it a lot because the, the person who had the problem misunderstood what they were told. Then it gets repeated and then we have people who have personally not had any problems but they fear they were, will, because other people have. And people that they trust right. and have a great deal of respect for. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. That's, that's what I'm weighing here. These yeah. are people mm -hmm. I've worked with for years and, and, yeah. and have yeah, most yeah. respect for. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how I kind of, you know, waded into yeah. trouble nice. by responding to somebody that I knew and respected and reached out with sympathy and it, it got it got very difficult because the person had misunderstood what she'd been told and then and, and understandable because and that's one of the the human elements here that's really you know we have to acknowledge is that people are sick people are in pain people are struggling and it just amplifies the impact of a problem um, and so you know this person thought that I was going to solve it because I reached out with sympathy um, and, you know, it, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. um, so I'm, I'm very wary now of, of um, how I communicate. <laughs> of being sympathetic. Well, yeah, of, of how I, I communicate about these and, and that, you know, we, um, when we made this switch, well, particularly the one that was really, really difficult is when we made the decision to make those, to, to take back choice of, uh, when we went to Hartford, we initially allowed people to stay with Blue Cross Blue Shield, but after very, very compelling numbers, um, about cost to the district and a lack of evidence that we had not fulfilled our obligation to provide equal or better coverage, you know, we voted to force these people to, um, to, to go on to Hartford. Um, and it was extremely difficult for me to face people that I have known and been friends with and worked with who were very, very upset um, and to say, I can't give you what you want. I, and as I recall, the, the cost differential just for the people who wanted to stay on Blue Cross, Blue Cross was like in excess of, what, five million dollars? No, it wasn't that much. It, it was, was about it was a over a million. It was over a million. Yeah. Over a million. Okay. Uh, a million of the district for the district. For the district. Not you are like there. Like 60, yeah. 60 people left. Oh, people. Yeah. So, um, so if we go back to the, to the question of in the last five years, people who have reached your office with denials or disputes, um, it, is that data available? So it probably would be, but the I think the issue at hand really probably should go back to the Aetna, yeah. which started in January of 21. Okay, so we've Thank only you. been on it a year and right. uh, you know, 10 months. Right. Yeah. So you have a much shorter, yes. I haven't been old until very recently. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, we can go back through. So we have some data already from Aetna talking about of the denials, how many were overturned and how, or how many did appeals. We do have some of that data available. We just wouldn't have, I just don't have the data available as like the people that have called. Right. How did that turn out for them, basically? Okay. Now, 
were you also the representative when we did the Hartford? So do we have any information on how Aetna is stacking up against the Hartford? Mm -hmm. Because we did, we, we reached, we had that huge resistance to any kind of change. And we dealt with it at the time by saying, okay, if you want to keep Blue Cross Blue Shield, you can do that. And then, I mean, most people, the vast majority of people did go over to the Hartford voluntarily, but the people who chose to stay on Blue Cross Blue Shield were just re really up, afraid, anxious yep. about change. And they were very, very resistant, very vocal, but I don't, at the point of change, but I don't recall a flurry of complaints, a, a large flurry of complaints. There was a very large flurry. Yeah, right yeah, after yeah, that right. group the, went over, the, we the were- The transition was rough. Yeah. Right. I remember that. We had more Hartford calls when those 60 people went over than all of your other folks combined. Oh, so I to, I, it might yes. be helpful to show that yes. this has worked much better than Hartford did for the overall constituency. That might be some some valuable a, a valuable comparative point, like where you're showing Excellus um, the the number of denials for Excellus, and then what what we had what we as a district had for the Hartford versus what we had for Etna. I'm not sure how much data as far as denials would be available with Hartford okay. because we'd have to get to Medicare first. And I don't know how willing Medicare would be to release any data to us. Yeah. But I will say when we presented to the committee, we started educating, everything was compared to Hartford because that's what people were used to at that time, right? So we said, okay, we heard you with this. Here's how we addressed it. In any area we could, we threw in every enhancement and it still made financial sense. And so um, that's actually what we did at the time. So now what we're left with is the issues are the process. So we're kind of, we're, we're having less complaints about the Atma. It seems bigger, I feel, probably because of the connectivity with the watchdog that we never had during Hartford. People weren't on a website every day keeping each other posted with what was going on with Hartford. Now during COVID, we have this website, and I feel like that is when things really started to blow up. Um, we hear a new rumor pretty regularly about, my friend can't get there, this or that, and of course we can't disclose HIPAA and all that. So it's, it's, been, it's been tough, but we're you know just addressing the issues as they come and just trying to do the best we can. Here's a question. So, um, uh, or well, maybe somebody knows. Uh, so when we have talked about the issue of going back to offering choice that people will want to, who, who understand how much more it would cost them uh, to go back to Blue Cross Blue Shield and you know, what wouldn't, wouldn't be covered uh, if we gave them choice. Um, I know, you know, Christina has said, She's very concerned about the cost of that, but also uh, Dr. Brown suggested there may be some legalities that would bar us from doing that because it's essentially we would be spending district money basically based on because people say this is what we want. <laughs> and um, So do we have any yeah, update um, on that? It would be almost Possible to go back and do cross blue shield. That, that I mean, probably, has a choice. That yeah, is. that probably is a legal impossibility. Um, allowing people to go back to a Medicare a supplemental plan uh -huh. is a possibility. It is not something that we're advocating for, but it's a legal possibility to allow for that. To allow for supplement some mechanisms that would have to take place. Um, it's a process, and it's, it would take at least a year, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm, one avenue uh, is that we wouldn't, the more people we offer choice to, the more, more legally problematic it becomes. But if there are certain people that have, that want to 
viable notice of claim, for example, we could settle those notices of claims with the gotcha. like that. But the more people who do that, it becomes more legally difficult to justify as settlement of particular claims. Mm -hmm. And it begins to look more like, you know, we're doing this wholesale. So there's some nuances. It's not a, it's not a dead legal issue, but. And going back to the Medicare supplement plan would be accepting some of those plan uh, categories that we had upgraded by going to Edna. So we'd almost be taking a step back. And they would be losing options. And they would be paying Upgrade more for it on top of it. it. So I, no we, we could look at it, but it doesn't seem like it would actually address really the concerns that have heard. And what I'm hearing is the, the concern that's that's really out there is the process concern because the process concern is the denial is is feeling like the lack of coverage the pre-authorization denials and then the medical necessity reviews right which those are the all time. you might get you might start doing your pt figuring everything's okay and then that does a medical review and it's like hey you can do this at home right and then you get essentially a denial is there anything, um, you know, some, like education of folks, like, you know, if you're going to do PT, here are the five things you should remember. Well, it's tough because PT, like I said, doesn't even have a prior off. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's... But it has a, it has a review, right? Yep. So, yeah. yeah, so with Excellus or Aetna, you know, you go five times, and then all of a sudden, your sixth time, you get a bill. And you go, hey, wait a minute, what's so going on So they pay the first... Few times. Yep, they get freebies, and yeah. then after a set amount of time, a set amount of visits, is when either carrier will do their review. So, I mean, you certainly could just do a general, very general education. If you're going to something like PT, just you know, be aware that you have to have a medical reason. Um, I will say, as far as the prior off goes, doctors are getting. Better. It seems like they're getting a little bit more unburied when it comes to the paperwork. Uh, so we're seeing the prior authorizations become a little bit more smooth. But if there's ever an emergency, so someone's in the emergency room and that's a service that needs a prior off, that goes out the window. Forget about it. We've had a person who needed an instant like MRI. They they weren't going to wait, obviously, the 72 hours. They went right to the ER, got what they needed, and they were fine. So emergency room always trumps yes. whatever. If there's an emergency, go and get your service, and you won't have to worry about it. If you can wait for the service, there's the prior off process. Uh -huh. So I think there are some things that absolutely we, um, you know, we could educate people about um, but one of the things that, that you know we're going to need to educate people about is that you know a group is calling for everybody to go back to Blue Cross Blue Shield this is what it will cost you if that happens this is what it will mean if that happens I think we can as far as going back to Blue Cross Blue Shield we can take that off the table it's, it's a legal you mean as a choice? As or a you choice. Mean, okay. I mean, we could as a, we could blanket go back to. I posited that question really? to Kate, and I said, well, could the board just choose to do it? And what you know, it's essentially like, how can we, how can we justify the expenditure of taxpayer money for a product that is is demonstrably right. inferior? It's not as equivalent. They got boosts when we went to Hartford, and they've gotten boosts. You know, not major ones, but right. So hearing aids, and, and it's much more expensive. So um, there's apparently I didn't do the research. Kate did uh, some controller's reports and would, would, in her mind, essentially prohibit that from happening. So, all right. Well, well, given that, um, you know, so we have a, a group of people coming to make a presentation to us including somebody who's flying from Florida, I think. Florida or Arizona, I don't know. Um, and they are going to be trying to convince us 
to go back to put everybody back on Exodus Blue Cross Blue Shield. So at what point do we share the fact that our legal counsel is telling us that um, that would not be something that we can do? So well, I think we, we need to have Kate here. Well, say or that. do we tell them before that so they can tailor their presentation? Maybe we'll reach out to Carl and um, yeah, and Sandy. And was, Sandy, she's right. coming. Uh, and uh, <laughs> Sandy, uh, that particular person's case, Sandy, she, sure. she did have. She had she had she legitimate had customer just, service issues. There's right. no question Russia. about that. Yes, so she with, definitely had customer with, service issues. With Edna. With yes, us. right. Yep. We have um, the main person at Aetna, the two main people that were involved in her whole case are no longer with Aetna, let's just say that. Um, so, uh, but to my knowledge, she has not been denied any service, unless she just hasn't told me. Uh -huh. But, well, they weren't covering the PT that she believes that, that her it husband was, is entitled to. Yep, so there's no plan of action sent in. So they wanted visits with no right. Plan. Okay. So the doctor, did the new, say, it was the new billing person. The new, oh, and then? Yes. Yeah, so the, you have to submit a plan of care right. and the number of visits you want. So has that been resolved? To my knowledge, she um, has not reached back out. Okay. All right. Yeah, because that's the other issue is someone who feels they were harmed in the past. Luckily, we we're only talking about the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, have, have they been made whole in some way, I suppose? Are there lingering cases like that? Well, I'm, I'm very eager to hear what, what the Watchdog group has to say. And I think rather than us conveying that Kate has said to Bob, I, I think we I should just, let I, them I just, know. I just, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that it's, that they deserve to know that you know, since the last time we had a meeting or communicated with them, that, um, you know, what they are proposing appears not to be possible. You don't want to waste their time yeah. with that aspect. Yeah, if they're leading yeah. to a certain conclusion. Yeah. We well, they, we know they're leading to Well, that's what I said the last meeting. Okay, then yeah. I, think, I think we need to have Kate here to say that to them. And I'm enough of a skeptic that I can honestly tell you that if Bob told me in a meeting like that that Kate said it, I would be, I would want to hear it from Kate. Um, How would we have Kate? Because um, I think the premise is to let them know before they spend time and effort coming from various places in the country. Right. Yeah. And they may need to tailor their presentation to right. knowing it's not possible. Yes. What is they they might want to what share. they might want to say. They might want to share. And they sure. also want uh, perhaps to talk about shifting to a uh, uh, supplemental. Mm -hmm. Instead of an event, right? Yeah, they might, they might take uh, quite a bit. But if they know that our legal counsel is at the point where she's not going to endorse us going back to Blue Cross Blue Shield, that does take a major yeah. piece out of it. Though. So yes. I think I think if we get, I'll get Kate to do a quick <coughs> statement to that fact and then share it with the folks. Good. And then and then we'll go from there. Okay. Good. Okay. That was the heads up. Yeah. Okay. We've got two minutes to go. So with your last two minutes, are there any other questions that I can answer for you? Would you put your mother on this plan? <laughs> okay. My mom's on it. Oh, right. and she? I'm on it. <laughs> Oh, I'm my but you're on it. She my sister's on it. My husband, my brother, <laughs> my sister-in-law. Sister and honestly, oh, like I said, we, you know, we work with so many schools that are on these plans, and people love it. And for, of course, everyone's always nervous. Change yeah. is nerve-wracking. Yeah, I get hard. that. But once they get on it and use it a couple of times and realize, oh, okay, this thing works, then usually it's... And this is the, like my sister, I was talking to her the other day, and I just said, yes, by the way, so do you have any problems? <laughs> you were right. And she said, no. She said, but I was at br a brunch with, you know, a bunch of my former colleagues, and one of them was really, like, on the warpath about this. And, 
you know, about this plan, and it made my sister think, oh, God, you know, am I going to have problems down the road? I just haven't yet. And uh, I shared some information with her, and uh, she said, oh, okay. Well, the important thing to know is no matter what carrier, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Right. That's actually why I have a job, actually, because <laughs> the carriers are sure. never perfect. But that's okay. Have them call us. We will get to the bottom of it. And... You know, that's the best advice I've given. If we need more call center cards to hand out to people when you hear a complaint, yeah. hand them a little business card. Please call ENV. Email, call, whatever. Please. That's that's the best because it's not only can we help them, but then it gets to me, and then I can educate and talk with you folks on, okay, how do we help in the big picture? So it's just good all around. Makes sense. Okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. I'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Nice meeting you. Really? I, I haven't been to one of these. Yes, it's been so long. Well, is there anything else you want me to bring next? Or am I just an observer next week? Oh, I see. Oh, be prepared to jump in. They've already heard my spiel. They don't know what I have to say. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, if there's anything else here, you need to I know, it really helps. I'm not going to get this kind of coverage when I retire. I've been at Cornell's website. It's like, oh, I'm going to pay out of pocket. Oh, no. You should have gone with the prestigious groups if the city school. No, it's just a Cornell. I'm starting to rethink. Yeah, I just said, I'm going to have a tone or. And, and I don't think it's as good. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's so, I remember when oh, Sam tried to work for Cornell, and, say, huh? and he had been on, you know, my plan in the school district <laughs> for a long time. And, you know, even I don't like you welcome. in the 10 yes. years. Yes. Right? So then he goes to. Have a great night, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much. much. And yeah. So yeah. I'm looking at, at what they're offering. And the thing is, they were offering different plans, which yeah. was like, you know, the menu that, that is open. Well, well, there's there's two different ones. ones. And I think yeah. I appreciate um, the final plan for healthy living administered by Aetna, and we paid very little out of pocket, and I've had a personal health account, but I look at what they've got for retirees is an 80-20, which is oh. through Aetna, which is not what I want, and my uncle, who recently passed, passed away two years ago at the age of 88, had Medicare and the, the, um, uh, uh, AARP supplement, United Healthcare, and he was he was in the hospital when he passed for a, a solid week with all kinds of invasive procedures. Not a single penny. Was but do I, you know what he pays for the policy? It, it's, it's the AARP one. It's the, it's an AARP oh. supplemental, and I, I'm going to actually look into it. Uh -huh. Well, that's the thing. Also, when when so soon went on Medicare. When he turned 65, yes, the meeting's oh. over. <laughs> <laughs> I move that we adjourn. Okay. <laughs>